Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents The Golden Curtain, a new musical play by Lawrence and Lee, starring Gordon McRae and his charming guest, Lucille Norman. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another musical first is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, we're telling you a musical story from behind the scenes at the opera. The Golden Curtain. Gentlemen, may I impress upon all the alleged singers in this group that Carmen takes place in Spain? You're all singing as if Carmen took place in New Jersey. <laughs> Mr. Jones? Oh? Uh, yes, sir, me. Well, you're not paying attention. What are you staring at over on this side of the stage? Uh-uh. Oh. Oh, I see. You are the new one, huh? Yes, sir. Were you making goo-goo eyes at Mr. Jones over there? Oh, no, sir. What's your name? Dibby Cooper. Dibby? What kind of a name is that? Well, someday I hope to make it Madame Delorma. That's when I start getting big roles and get out of the chorus. Well, there is an ambitious one for the first day. Mr. Jones? Yes, sir? Now, here's a pretty girl. Sing this to her. All of you, sing it to uh, uh, Madame Delorma of the future. Now, you show them how, Mr. Jones. Je peux vous le rendre, Seigneur, Seigneur, car avec les soldats. Oui, les poéros peuvent s'entendre pour plaisir, pour plaisir, il faut les combats. Le cirque est plein ce jeu de fête, le cirque est plein du haut en bas. Les spectateurs, et l'on l'a pété, les spectateurs s'en dépêlent, un grand fracot, un poisson reprisé ta face, tout ce que je suis à l'enfile, car c'est la fête du calage, c'est la fête du jaune du cœur,
Okay, chorus dismissed for the day. No. Uh, excuse me. Oh, hi. I'm sorry I distracted you during chorus rehearsal. You see, I was staring at you. Were you? You have a very kind face. I've always got to sing to a kind face. If anybody scowls while I'm singing, I go flat. If they sneeze or cough, I go sharp. Well, <clears throat> I was staring at you, too. Were you? Mm -hmm. I thought you were, but I wasn't sure. Dibby, you don't mind my calling you Dibby, do you? <sighs> Madame Delorme sounds so formal. I guess I did sound kind of green. It's just that... Well, don't expect it to happen day after tomorrow, Dibby. I've seen a lot of gals come and go in this chorus, and... Most of them ended up with broken hearts because they didn't turn into Gallic Kirchy in two weeks. Can you sing? Well, what do you mean, can I sing? Do you think I'd get a job at the Met if all I could do was, well, yodel? No, I mean, do you have a big voice to be? Can you peel the gold leaf off the top of the balcony rail? Let me hear you. Right here? Well, sure. Chorus is dismissed. And you know I've discovered the stage of the Met is the greatest rehearsal hall in the world. Well, all right. I'll think something from Samson and Delilah. Good. Studying, rehearsing every day? Well, no. You're not, eh? Come here. Where? Right down into the audience. Now look. Where? Up above the golden curtain, Dibby. The golden proscenium. The March of the Immortals. Listen to the mighty sound of their names Giuseppe Verdi. <laughs> François Gouno. Ah, 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 ah,
Across the curved arts, their names stand high to me, and their music soars up from the stage to touch them. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. And right at the center, Richard Wagner. Giacomo Puccini. Beethoven and Massine, Glick, Rossini, and Strauss and Leon Gabbana. Listen. Music, the silence is. Will you let me help you, Dibby? Work with you? I'll let you help me. All right, Dibby. Now some practice on duets. You've got to learn to sing duets with all kinds of people, even tenors. All right. Oh, Gray. Now let's try this, Greek. When you sing a duet, Watch your partner's lips, Dibby. Get as close to them as you can. All right, Gray. I'm close. You begin. I hear you ask if I am yours for key. That a doubt should ever pass you I say it waking, shall I say it sleeping? I love you, lips. I love you, love. I love Like you see? Well, of course I mean it. I think for once we found the exception to the rule. The girl in the chorus who can step out and sing a solo. No, the words. Ich liebe dich. I love you. Oh, very good. Very good in the words. Excellent. Your diction is improving all the time. Gray. Now I... I've taught all I can. You've reached the point, Dibby, where you've got to go to a real expert. Ludwig Ludenstein in Boston. He's the best. But you've got to work, Dibby. You've got to forget everything and everybody but your voice. Everything and everybody? You want me to go, Gray? I want you to be what I believe you can be. All right, Gray. I'll go, I'll go to Boston. Do I say goodbye now? No, of course not. I'll say goodbye when I take you to the train. No, Gray. I'll say it right now. Bye. Goodbye, Gray. Dibby! Dibby! I want you to be what I believe you can be, a great singer. But, oh, Dibby. I love your lips. I love your laugh. I love the tear that dips your dancing eyes. I love you, dear.
We'll return in a moment for Act Two of The Golden Curtain. Recently, a well-known railroad received a friendly letter expressing clearly and sincerely a feeling that is close to the heart of rural America. The writing of that letter came about in this way. One night not long ago, the board of directors of the Lions Club of Alvarado, Texas, met at a local church. They got to talking about the part played by the railroads in the economic, cultural, and social life of their town. The upshot of the conversation was that it would be nice to write a letter about it. And here's what the letter said. At the last meeting of the directors and officers and counselors of our Alvarado Lions Club, we decided to write you this letter of appreciation. We know it costs you plenty of money to build your physical equipment here and a considerable sum to maintain it in such excellent condition. And we're grateful to you. We appreciate your contribution to the taxes to help maintain this town and our schools and county roads. We're glad for the men you employ who live here and patronize our stores and help maintain our churches and utilities. We're grateful for your good and courteous service, and we wish to especially commend the excellent mail service your trains give us. We want you to consider us as your friends. Yes, anyone who lives or has ever lived in a small town knows how the writers of that letter felt. For America depends on the railroads for almost everything we eat, wear, buy, or use. It is the railroads that not only provide our essential transportation, but also pay taxes and wages that help maintain the standard of living in countless communities that, added together, make up America. Now, here is Act Two of the new Lawrence and Lee play with music, The Golden Curtain, starring Gordon McRae as Graham Jones and Lucille Norman as Dibby Cooper, with Ludwig Donath as the director. All right. All right, chorus dismissed for tonight. Um, Mr. Jones. Yes, sir. What seems to be wrong with you these days? You used to be the mainstay of my chorus. And now you sing with all the enthusiasm of a tired piece of scenery. Well, nothing's wrong, sir. I, uh, oh. I... I have noticed a certain young lady has dropped out of our group. Whatever happened to her? She got too good for the chorus, sir. And she's gone off to Boston to study with Ludenstein. Oh, she's a good teacher. I approve. Mr. Jones, well, I too was young once, so this is probably difficult to realize. I know why you are singing in 18 flats. It's spring. Go, go walk in the park. Spring in New York is a very good tonic. It'll make you forget all your troubles. Some spring. What good is it? Daisies are bursting to tell me what's new. Mornings are gentle and shiny with you. But what does it mean if I haven't got you? It's some spring. Nights are like velvet and freckled with stars. People are all kissing people in cars. But I might as well be on Venus or Mars. It's some spring. I walk down the street with my nose in the air. It can be spring for all I care. Let it bust out all over and split at its seams. Choke on its clover and trip on its dreams. While all the world is out having a lark Here I sit all by myself in the park Just holding my own little hand in the dark It's some spring I walk down the street with my nose in the air It can be spring for all I care It can blast out all over and split all its seams Joke on its clover and rip on its dreams Here I sit all by myself in the park A glum little 
X on the spot that I mark Just holding my own little hand in the dark It's some spring Gray Dibby Dibby, what are you doing here? Looking for you They said at the Met that you were probably walking in the park tonight But shouldn't you be in Boston studying? Well, yes isn't it going well, Dibby? Does Ludenstein like your voice? Have you been studying hard? One what? question at a time. I've got to hear you sing. What have you been practicing? Mozart, Verdi, Wagner? Duet. I've been practicing duet. Well, that's fine. You know, a night like this calls for a duet. Let's try one, all right? All right. Fairest night of starry rain Oh, smile on high Dear far than e'er was day, O oh, lovely night be kind. Time and tide are fleeting fast to cheat our tender blisters. They must bear us on at last and leave sweet love behind. about my voice? Just that I'm amazed at the progress you've made. Gray, I'm going away. Back to Boston so soon? Far away. Overseas to Europe. To study in Italy. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes, that's it. I Italy. Milan. La Scala. Oh, that's the best. Why, you'll come back, Madame Delorme, Divi, just like you've always dreamed. Yes, just like I've always dreamed. Will you come to the boat to... Wave goodbye. Why, sure. Sure, Dibby. Oh, the shore that's going ashore. You look beautiful, Dibby. What did you say, Gray? I can't hear you. <laughs> well, get closer to the ship's railing. I'll lean out over the dock as far as I can. I said, you look beautiful, Dibby. All those furs, you look just like a prima donna. I, I can't hear you, Gray. All I wanted to say, Dibby, is I love you. Percy, Percy, don't take up that gangplank. I'm getting off. Let me through, please. Dibby, what are you doing? Oh, Gray, you said it. At last you said it. Dibby, you, you missed the boat. I don't have a ticket. What? Just the visitor's pass. Dibby. I can't afford to go to Europe to study. But what about all those furs and everything? I rented them from a costume company. Dibby? I had to do something. 
<laughs> you, you, I wanted you to miss me enough so you'd say it. All you were ever interested in was my voice. Have you been to Boston, Dibby? Have you been studying with Ludenstein? Uh-uh. And how come your voice is so improved? Well, I think that just being in love makes you sing better. Any teacher will tell you that. <laughs> but in the movies and musical comedies, everybody always ends up as a big star. This isn't working out right at all. Oh, stop talking. Mm. Mm. Oh, to heck with the movies. Living is better than ever. I say it waking, shall I say it sleeping? I love your lips, I love your laugh. I love the dear that dims your dancing eyes. I love you, dear. And Norman will be back in just a moment. Meanwhile, our hearty thanks to Ludwig Donat, who was the choral director in our play, and, and to our entire company. The Golden Curtain was written especially for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. And incidentally, the song, It's Some Spring, was composed by our, our own choral director, Norman Luboff, with words by a girl named Dibby, believe it or not, Dibby Brown of Alberta, Canada. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? A little while ago, we told you about a letter which a railroad received from the Lions Club of Alvarado, Texas. Here's the explanation one of the members gave for writing that letter. We've had experience in building highways and streets through our city limits. When I see railroad tracks running through our town, I look at them and think to myself, I'm glad that we don't have to foot the bill for putting the railroad through here. Yes, the railroads build and maintain their own highways of steel. And the more of America's freight that moves over them, the less will be the costly damage to the public highways you must pay for with your taxes. Gordon, it was a thrill peeking behind the golden curtain with you. Ah, uh, they met at the Met. What a title for a picture. <laughs> <laughs> and next week, Lucy, we'll be singing the great Scott ballads of Bobby Burns together. For our musical play is Annie Laurie. See you in Scotland next Monday night, Gordon. I'll be there with my kilts on. Uh, Good night, Lucy. You're wonderful. <laughs> All aboard. Well, folks, it looks as though we're ready to pull out, and so until next Monday night, and Annie Laurie, this is Gordon McRae saying goodbye. <laughs> Gordon McRae appeared through the courtesy of Warner Brothers, producers of Our Lady of Fatima. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroads. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Transcribed. The Pacific Telephone Hour is next on NBC.